Now that you've completed your mold and you've made an armature to fit inside your mold, you're going to need to buy a foam latex kit to make your foam latex puppet. And within that kit, you're going to find a mold release. Take a brush and brush in a thin layer to both halves of your mold's puppet pattern. The mold release allows your foam latex puppet to actually remove from the mold without ripping or tearing. Now once the mold release has dried, you're going to take a dry brush and you're going to brush away all the dry excess that's within the pattern. And this ensures that your pattern is smooth and that you're not leaving any texture on the surface of the foam latex puppet. Next you're going to take your armature and you're going to place it inside the mold and make sure that it fits properly. You can also put the two halves together to make sure that it seals properly as well. Then you're going to pour your foam latex base into a cup on top of a scale. I'm measuring out 300 grams here for two batches. Then you take your foaming agent and your curing agent and pour it into the same cup on top of a scale. Now you can get these gram scales at uh, grocery stores or even at um, hardware stores. Um, you can get digital ones. Uh, uh, they say to get a triple beam when using this stuff, but it's not necessary. Just measure out your grams properly. Then you're gonna take your gelling agent and you're gonna pour this into a completely separate cup and place this to the side. This is your last ingredient in the process and you don't wanna pour this in too prematurely. Now I take my foam latex base and I pour it into the bowl of my Mix Master Sunbeam Mixer. And then I take my curing and my foaming agent and pour this also into the same bowl. I then take my stopwatch, set it, and turn the dial to one. Now depending on the temperature and the humidity of your room and your environment, will also greatly affect the amount of time that you spend mixing. So you're going to need to refer to the instructions on your manual for how to deal with this process. Next, I turn the dial to seven, and this is the whipping stage. This makes it froth up and foam. Now once it's frothed up and foamed, due to my humidity and temperature, I now take it to the refining stage, and this is speed number four. This is, goes for about two minutes on my scale, and then I switch it to one, and this is the ultra refining stage. I make sure things are mixed properly, just kind of feel around there. Now once this has gone to the appropriate length of time, I pour in my gelling agent. And I do this very slow and I drip it in. And this stuff can set pretty fast depending on your humidity and your temperature. So you may have to do a couple batches before you figure it out. Now I'm gonna back bowl. And I do this for about 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna let it go and for another 30 seconds and mix forward. Now you can get a humidity scale and temperature scale at your local Radio Shack or pretty much anywhere. And it's very vital and important when you're doing your film latex. Without a proper gram scale or without a proper humidity gauge and temperature gauge, you'll never get your film latex right. Turn off my mixer, take all the excess off the blades, and then now I'm ready to pour the foam latex into the mold pattern. Now you could brush this stuff in, but just out of experience, I just like pouring it in and getting it done. If there was a lot of heavy detail to this puppet, I would definitely be brushing it in first. But since it's such a smooth puppet and I'm not really worried about bubbles, um, I just pour it in all over, make sure everything is covered, and uh, I'll stick my armature in there and slap my two halves together. Something you should know, I made sure all the fingers didn't have bubbles in them and that the feet didn't have bubbles in them as well. These are two trouble areas that you want to avoid. Also, the nose and the eyes and the face are, is another area. Stick the two halves together, and then I rotate it back to make sure that the foam covers all surfaces and then I press it together hard with clamps. You can buy these clamps at the same source that you bought your foam latex from, and they're very vital and you should get a pair. Now you're gonna let the foam latex sit for anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour, and it will gel. 
and set. And you can tell by pressing on it and it sticks and isn't foamy anymore. Then you're gonna take your mold and stick it in an oven. Now this oven here is from the plans of the December 2009 issue of Stop Motion Magazine where you can find out actually how to make this oven. Don't use your home oven, it, it'll make your oven unusable for cooking. Um, then I let the foam sit in there for anywhere between three to five hours at 185 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and then I pull the mold out. I rush and get it on a surface that is uh, stable and I pull off my bands and I'm going to separate my two halves by sticking my screwdrivers into the little joints where um, I made the mold indentations and I'm going to gently pry open the mold very slowly and you'll see steam releasing here. Um, if your foam is not completely cured and you see a lot of steam, you could stick the mold open inside the oven and uh, let your foam sit there and cure for a little longer. And this will ensure that you, you just ex exited all the steam out of the puppet and it's cured fully. Um, I did that in this case of the puppet. Next, you're gonna pull off the foam around the surface of the mold and gently pry away the puppet from the pattern. If you've done everything right up to this stage, then you should have a perfect pull and you should be very happy at this point. Now, if you have a bad situation where you've had an inner core collapse or air bubbles or anything that's just wrong with the puppet, chances are you've done one stage wrong or you added an ingredient at the wrong point and or sp speed or something is completely off and you need to go backtrack and find out what you did wrong. For inner core collapses, you most likely have a gelling agent or a curing agent that is set in the bottom of the bottle and you need to shake the hell out of that bottle before you make another batch. This way you can mix all your ingredients properly. In fact, just do that in general as a habit whenever you're mixing a batch of foam latex. Now, um, you see that I pulled the puppet out. It's still a little bit warm. Actually, it's pretty hot and I'm gonna set it aside and walk away for a number of hours. The other thing you wanna do is make sure you put your mold back in the oven or wrap it in a towel. But you wanna keep it warm, otherwise it's gonna start cracking and it will break and it suffers from mold shock. And you wanna preserve your molds as long as you possibly can. Now, if you wanna find the plans for how to make the oven that we showed you, um, go to stopmotionmagazine.com and feel free to download our December 2009 issue of Stop Motion Magazine and uh, you'll find the blueprints and the tutorial there. Do not bake your foam latex puppets in your home oven. It'll just make you sick after a while once you start cooking food in your home oven. It's just not a good idea. Um, also, please feel free to subscribe to Stop Motion Magazine's YouTube channel and our Stop Motion Magazine websites and uh, join our blog and blah, blah, blah. And hopefully you've uh, enjoyed what you've seen. And if you have any questions, leave them below. And we'll see you soon in the next tutorial, which is how to seam your foam latex puppet.